Well, hello everyone and welcome back. Um, it's been a while. I was at Wonderfest last weekend, so that's why I haven't really posted in much videos. I did post a wonder a video on Wonderfest, so that's up there. But it's time to get back to work and back in the shop. And um, so I'm trying to remember where I was on this uh, AT AT. And I do remember that I think the last thing we were doing is the legs. And then we got this piece here made to, uh, you know, we cut the tabs off that clicked it on there before. And uh, put glue them in here to fill in that space and then we'll putty those up. And then I was going to, and I probably still will put magnets down here to help hold it. But it pretty much holds itself in pretty good. Enough that to make a a battery cover so I'm really happy with that that it kind of has its own static hold but we'll put some magnets up here and then this will slot up inside so we don't have to worry about that um, one other thing I did off camera that I was kind of upset that I forgot to do while I had the head apart and everything is I went excuse me you're gonna hear the battery box bounce around in there I went and put the headlights the, the floodlights that they have spotlights that they had underneath some of these uh, AT-ATs. I should have done that and I could have just drilled holes and had the wires going right up into there but now I had it all together so I had to do some little retrofitting. Just use styrene tube <clears throat> that would uh, hold a three millimeter LED so that's all I really had to do there. Let's run that tube and that'll hide uh, a lot of the uh, connection points to the LEDs. Um, and then I ran these in series. That way I didn't have to run two pairs of wires up to each LED. Um, so I used magnet wire for the positive. I came and I just drilled down right there at the neck where I could get it close enough through the head to get down to a good hidden point on the neck so I had to drill another hole there and another hole there but like I said once you paint all that you won't really see them and it can kind of look like you know just normal wiring going to the to the head of the ship so then I poked that up through and then just ran them straight back to where the gun is brought them over and and brought them you know just to make them look like they're conduit already you know already conduit detail on the model so and that's basically all I did just run the wire boom 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 and once we paint all that it'll look like you know just normal piping now to to come out of this negative here I just use one of those real small wires from uh, those SMD LEDs I just ran a small wire, drilled the hole through these two plates to get it to connect these in series. And then the, the resistor I just tied to the end. That way I didn't have to deal with a resistor up in here. So I just tied it to the end and then ran the negative back down through. And if I can grab the battery case. I just brought them and joined them here with the other wires going to the red light in the head and there's the resistor for the so I just tied those two reds together and tied those two negatives together to the battery pack and it works my battery's low because I was running it last night so it's probably gonna not have enough juice no <laughs> maybe I can get another battery because I don't think I screwed this one on should have another free battery here I'm thinking one of the regular batteries would probably have a charge left. Maybe. There we go. But as you can see now that I finally found a battery, there we go. We got the spotlights. So those will go 
not good on her. But I really wanted to do that. I was like, there's not much lighting going on with this ship except for, you know, this vehicle except for the red window. And I think since I'm going to do the jungle scene and it's murky, he would have his floodlights on to kind of see. Um, but yeah, that's where we are on that. So that came out good. I'm happy with that. Got the wiring glued down. We'll spray that. It'll look just like conduit and normal mechanics underneath the ship. But most of the time it's underneath where you won't see it anyway. Because she'll be like this. So, you know, unless you t tilt the head. So that's kind of how they did it in the real world situation. It's going to be hidden. Just get it under there to shoot it. So what we're doing here is I'm adding some stuff detailed that the Bandai has. Because this guy here, what she went, she got a merit. As you notice, they have that plating, but it's just, this is actually molded in. But I'm okay with that. I wish it was separate pieces so it sat a little more 3D. But that'll work. But as you notice, the Bandai has this one that bends around up top and then it has these two little ones down here and I want to add all those on there to give it more of the detail so I've been kind of following what that is and I kind of got the basic shape of it and then I'm gonna to have to fold it right here I think you know instead of making it two pieces and then, but if not I'll make it two pieces but it'll kind of do that and then it's gonna bend down like that as a shield that'll go over like that <clears throat> so that's what we're kind of working on there um, so got the basic shape may have a little bit of refining there because it's such a small shape so it's hard to sometimes get them exactly duplicate because there's no real way to cut it that's the problem. Like I can't get in there with scissors. I can't get in there with. It's hard to make curves with a knife. That are you know. Nice. There we go. But here's my line that I'm gonna split it. So I'm gonna see if I can take this to me a panel liner. It takes a gouge out. It takes a notch out. So I think if I, I already scored it with the. Uh, mark it with that maybe I'll score it a little more with a knife to give this something more to, to trench into I just used my calipers to kind of score that measurement it's hard to see silver on white I think my knife will make a better score there we go that this can follow and I could use this ruler to hold the this will take a little bit of plastic out and make almost like a notch and that might help me allow this to bend Might even use like some of that solvent glue but yeah it's starting to bend now but we don't want it to break we just want it to bend so it's just getting plastic out of the way in the back here and I think that'll do it in a sense Once I get that angle, which I'm kind of liking that right there. And that's how she'll sit. And then what I can use probably is some of this glue. Get it to glue it in shape and also it'll help it bend a little bit too. 
Let's see if we can do that. Yep, it made a break right now, <laughs> which I was afraid because it's so thin there. I should have probably used the less solvent D kind, but oh well. So I'll have to do it the old fashioned way in two pieces, which I didn't really want to, but that's okay. see how our angle is kind of do that to hold it into that angle I kind of wish this was a little bigger I would cut that a little bigger but that's okay we're kind of trying to stay in this line here, and I think it must have flared out a little more, but this will give us the good the idea of what we're trying to reach for. We don't want you to glue to the model yet. We're going to raise it up like a panel. So we'll just let that sit. Probably should put a big glob of regular Ravel glue back there to give it a some type of a gusset a little more substance there instead of that thin glue that really disappears and I think the other thing we're gonna do is do uh, styrene things around these guards here on the big one it's really just got to box it around and then two in the center and that that'll give it the detail it's really all they did there and I think I got thin styrene that I can do that with but that's where I'm at I'm gonna keep trucking away on this cuz that camera is gonna lose power soon and uh, but I just want to show you in a little update well hello everyone and welcome back we're getting pretty far on uh, adding some parts to the uh, AT-AT. Um, move these legs out of the way. Um, the body, I took the legs off because it was easier to sand some parts. Um, got the detail on the back here. Added those panels, those, I guess they're little armor panels to protect the back area. I wish these were a little further out or they made them separate pieces like Bondi did that you could actually you know plug in because these are actually supposed to be out further but that works it gives you the idea of what it's supposed to be instead of just those two I added those and those look so much nicer um, puttied up and then did a little bit of the gray surface primer from Tamiya on the seams I actually had to build a panel line part here just with a little piece of styrene because they completely didn't put one there where the top and the side notch together this one looks okay because they did add the little part the panel line to that so I just just the putty I can connect it together but yeah just the piece of styrene worked great I just gotta sand all that stuff down I might have to apply a little bit. I still see some seam work. I might see a little bit. So we'll see what. We'll give it a sand and then we'll see if it needs another coat of surface primer. Um, all the detail in the head is uh, pretty much done. I don't think there's much more I want to do to that. I got the grid that's on that guard there on the guns. Made a little greebly out of styrene myself there. Add some detail there because there was some type of thing here. Added these panels because the it's the head's supposed to get a little bit wider, and it, it does look like they actually did this. Looking off the Bondi and looking off of uh, Lauren Pearson's uh, reference book, yeah, this was a whole separate. So that's really authentic to what the way it was built. And then that also allowed me on this side to have the detail of that open one there. 
it's not completely open, but it, you know, it's a cove. There's a little greebly from, uh, I think the NX-1. I think that's the, uh, the hatch by the captain's, uh, lounge on the bridge. That was supposed to poke through a hole. But then I had the 3D print it, or the photo etch part. So I never had to use that, so that worked good for a little greebly there. Put a little square there. Um, what else did we do? We got the fog lights down here on, or floodlights, or whatever you want to call them. I was able to get them in, sneak the wires down and through. And on the legs, I'd just been going through and uh, I went and hit it with a file because they were kind of steppy where the two halves were. And uh, so I filed them, then sanded them, and then I hit them with a surface primer. Because the gaps weren't too, there's a couple that are pretty big, but there is supposed to be lines, details going down this leg. Anyway, so. And then I added this piece here on the joint. All I did is take a little piece of round styrene and just cut it. And that kind of simulates, I think that's where they actually put a, uh, a uh, hex head Allen bolt, Allen bolt to bolt the legs together. And there actually, I believe, should be another one right here. There should be one here and here. And on this side, which is the outside, you'd see a little nub from the screw coming through. And this side should have another cap like that. But these kind of simulate the cap. I could kind of round them off a little bit. But at least the detail's there. Still uh, in the uh, air, if I want to make these look like, you know, some like this and then some with it down further on these pistons because they're supposed to look like they go up and down um, Bondi already had like different ones you could choose for where it was all up all down and then you know one up and one down to kind of simulate when these joints move that the piston is actually pulling so I, I think all I would have to do is get a styrene and just lay it flat here how far I went down and I probably fill the and glue it and then probably fill the sides with just some putty or something I think that would give me the effect and I wouldn't have to do it on all of them I have to see how I want the legs posed if it's gonna be a straight leg I'll probably have them you know probably just leave them like this where they're up like that and then you know if I have it with a little twist make this one more than the other but all in all, I have to say for Ravel, they did a pretty good job of hiding a lot of the stuff. You know, building the Bondi one first, that's like, they, they have a way of hiding stuff. So you can just snap their kits together pretty much and they look good. The big, big seam line on this one was right in here. It was on that thing. Like there was complete huge gaps. And everything's tight. It's just the way it was designed. Kind of like if I pop this back off. Got this all nice and puttied up too. Where those tabs were that we're supposed to clip that on. So now that looks like one piece. Um, yeah, it was kind of like that. But even that's better. The inside it had a complete open. Which I don't know if you can see back there. How that has an open. It was bad like that. But. This one, we're not going to worry about because this piece covers it. That piece there will completely hide all that. I'm going to get it in camera. Yeah, it will completely hide all that so we don't have to fix that line back there. You'll never see it. But the front one's the front and center. That's kind of one that, you know, the front one here you're, you're going to see. So we'll get that one cleaned up. And I'm still on the fence about the leg strut things here if this leg uh, depending on how you move this leg if this leg goes this way and they had that and there's a notch here the more this way it goes the more it comes down and then when this pushes up it brings it into like like that or is it this way I think it's this way yeah and it comes like that I don't know if I'm going to do, I definitely don't want to put the notch in here, 
because on the Bondi it goes all the way through. I haven't seen on the reference pictures of the actual kits, models, if they had that there or they just had it floating. And it looks like they just had it floating and it was attached here. Because that'll, that'll weaken this because this is only one little plate of plastic. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in here and that way I can move it. It doesn't matter. But at least the details there. And it's a real easy piece. It's kind of almost, it's about yay big and it kind of just comes out and slightly arcs. And then it uh, looks like the last piece steps out a little bit. And uh, so I could build it up with styrene and then add that last piece, just make it the same shape, but it's a little smaller. It's not as wide. And it gives it that step panel step kind of look. And that's all really it is. So, and probably what I'll do is I'll just drill a hole and use a round piece of styrene to peg it in. And then just make the shape. I don't think that'll be too, it definitely won't be terribly hard. So I think we should do that to bring this up one more step to more authenticity. But that's kind of an iconic little piece. I always see, that's something that catches my eye, at least when I look at the leg area. Okay. But that's basically where we're at. Um, I'm going to keep on sanding. And everything else is pretty much sanded except for the surface primer on all these parts. All that's cleaned up. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. The kit relatively went together pretty well. Oh, and back here to hide this seam where the two halves of the head went. That seam right there. I think to hide that, I'm going to uh, do a panel because I noticed on the Bondi there's a little raised panel with a recess, kind of almost like a door, looks like, um, right here. And I can use that to hide that panel, that seam line there. It's quite a step, too. So I can just glue that over it and that'll completely hide that and any little bit you do see can look like a, a panel line but at least it'll hide the majority of that I can even make it a little bigger so it hides some of this opening they had to make this opening a little bigger just to get head movement but I mean there's some minor details like I said the biggest thing on the head was you know adding this because it started making the head has that shape of getting wider but this panel line seam this whole you know this was getting smaller and it shouldn't like these little raised notches, this thing, this detail here was higher than this back, and it's not. This is supposed to be higher than that. And then it has this lip kind of like they have on these heavy panels here, armor panels. It was supposed to have that kind of thing on the top, too. So that was relatively really quick and easy. I just took tape and traced that mark and then traced where the panel lines are and then put that on styrene and then traced it all out. It worked good. And adding that detail to the armor plating around the guns was a must. That's something you see right away, too. But that's where we're at on this. Um, we're going to keep on going into that and then uh, probably give her mask up. We're going to mask up uh, the lights in the window and then we can start. I got a little gap there to fill up in the corner. Oh, no, the primer filled it up. Yeah, and then we'll hit it with a black primer and kind of appreciate it with some black primer. And then we can start mixing up a, a hull color. But until next time, thanks for watching.